Welcome to Colorado Mountain College's Microsoft Forefront Identity Manager Implementation Lesson Learned I Seminar. Our featured guest speaker for today's presentation is Carleen Clark, Director of Application Services at Colorado Mountain College. If you're facing any audio difficulties, please dial in using the number on the audio section of the GoToMeeting screen. At the end of today's presentation, we will be taking questions posted in the web conference questions pane. The questions pane is available in the attendee control panel. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting IDM Engine. Colleagues, good afternoon. It's approximately 2 p.m. here in Cleveland, Ohio. On behalf of IDM Engine, I'd like to thank approximately 30 institutions, including Bates Technical College, Madison Media Institute, Technical College of the Low Country, Concordia University, Wisconsin, Colorado Technical University, Valencia College, along with several other uh, higher ed and K-12 inst institutions who've dialed in for today's I seminar to learn more about Colorado Mountain College's Microsoft Forefront Identity Manager project implementation for you know with IDM Engine. Today's featured speaker is Colleen Clark. She's a director of application services. Uh, for some of you who are unfamiliar with IDM Engine, IDM Engine is the number one identity management platform in higher education and K-12 uh, space with over 50 clients including Marshall University, Los Angeles Unified School District, LAUSD, Los Angeles Community College District, uh, LACCD, University of Southern Indiana, California State University, LA, Francis Howell School District, State of North Dakota, and uh, Salt Lake Community College, to name a few. After Colleen's briefing, we will do a deeper dive into what IDM Engine is. Uh, we will uh, we, we will have Colleen uh, spend you know about close to 30 to 40 minutes talking about the lessons learned, and then we leave the last uh, 10 minutes to Q and A. At that point, we're going to leave uh, lines open for our audience, so you know you can you can go ahead and ask uh, uh, as many questions as you like, and we'll have. Uh, Colleen and her team uh, address uh, questions as as you guys you know ask. So at this stage, I'll pass the platform to our featured guest, presenter Colleen direct uh, Colleen Clark, sorry, director, application services at CMC. Over to you, Colleen. And I've also made you the presenter. Thank you. Um, as you said, my name is Carleen Clark, and I'm with Colorado Mountain College. And basically, my team is responsible for everything software um, here at Colorado Mountain College. And with me on the line, I do have Felix Huptel, and really, he's my brain. So um, this project is really um, set on his shoulders, mostly. Um, and I think we have something sitting here in the middle of the screen. There you go. <clears throat> Um, so we're a community college sitting in the middle of the Rocky Mountains on the western slopes. We have 11 locations um, that's really comprised of seven campuses, and we're spread out over 12,000 square miles. So there's some distance between some of our campuses. And in the picture here, you'll see one of our smaller sites. This is in Chafee County. And off and on, this site primarily does a lot of um, customized classes for the local prison, helping some of those young men learn skills before they're um, released. So they, they have a very large task, but a very small campus. We are so unable to see your screen, Colleen. <clears throat> you are not. I don't know. Oh, OK. I see that now. It's a there little tiny go. thing okay. on the very end. I'm so sorry. Cool. That's fine. We can see it now. what you can see. <laughs> That's all right. Thank okay, you. so this is the uh, the, the slide um, of Chasey County. So we have approximately 20,000 students per semester with a, an FTE of 3,000, and this is, includes um, you know all of our students. But 50% of our students are non-credit, non-degree seeking students. So that's when you see that huge difference between our um, number of students per semester versus our FTE. So we have those. Um, that 50% taking personal enrichment classes, or we have a lot of what we do is called customized business services 
for industries like the oil and gas where we go into their industry and do personalized trainings based upon criteria that they provide for us. We also have about 1,400 faculty and staff, and that includes our full-time and part-time. So we are a colleague school. We are still on Unidata. We have not done that migration to SQL. And we very specifically have made the decision not to move to SQL just because there are other things that we felt were more important to deal with. And Elucian has not given an end of life on Unidata at this time. So we have a single domain active directory. And just like all other schools out there, we have all of these systems that we're trying to integrate. And part of that is what has created the need to do um, our identity management project. Because we started having people using all these different systems and concerned about the number of usernames and passwords across all those systems. <clears throat> so what we started out with was this um, non-integrated systems. So we've had this long history here of where we were adding systems but not thinking about how we were going to integrate them. Plus we were having other departments purchasing software without involving IT to find out how it would integrate with the system. So we were getting creative and you know getting systems in. And some of those systems they were actually managed by other departments, so we didn't know what they were doing with them. And they were coming up with their own methodology of figuring out what usernames to use, um, how to create passwords. And so it was just creating greater and greater confusion. Um, and so then we also had, with Active Directory, it was unstructured. And we were using it basically for authentication for desktops and network access only. So all the other systems, people were you know, logging into all of them, having to track those unique usernames and passwords. So this is where it really gets into the nitty gritty. And it really, at this time, kind of feels like that once upon a time. We had the sales pitch at the very beginning of, what identity management was going to be, what did that really mean for IT. And we were promised that we were going to have you know, this single sign-on with federated services for all of our systems, including auto-provisioning and deprovisioning. And don't forget, we were promised that because we were outsourcing this project to Campus EAI, there was going to be no impact to IT. Now, honestly, that's something that we've heard before. And we were a little afraid of that magic button. And so straight out of the gate, a lot of the technical team started digging their heels in. Um, they really didn't want to be a part of the project. And so we had a problem straight out of the gate. And so the reality of what happened is um, you need to gain an understanding of which systems um, can be integrated into identity management framework. Um, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. You've got to clean up your Active Directory infrastructure um, and all those associated systems. During the first phase, um, we decided to integrate Web Advisor, Active Directory, staff email, student email, and the My Campus portal, and um, to provide basic very basic group provisioning of Active Directory and user accounts. Um, as of today, this is what our architecture looks like. Um, and there's, I mean, there's a ton of books out there on the topic that you can look at. There's lots of information on the web. And there's forums out there dedicated just to the discussions of the in and outs of identity management. And we really, with our limited time today, can't go into that. But what I want to point out is that for us, the journey was not an easy one. And frankly, we were not prepared for it. So before you start your project, I strongly suggest um, getting your team ready, providing training, and making sure that your team really, really, really understands what identity management means. What does it mean to your institution in the way of workload? And what are your project outcomes? What are those expectations? Um, as you can see from the diagram, we started out small. We kept our integration to WebAdvisor, the Campus Portal, Gmail. We had Exchange in there. And we felt that these systems were more than enough to wrap our heads around. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we're a Unidata shop. And long before we started this project, um, we were integrating systems um, that were all SQL-based. So we had on board the ODS. 
uh, for Blackboard Analytics. And we decided to use ODS. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to lose my voice. <coughs> so we had decided to use the ODS to send data from our SQL systems to, or from, from the ODS to the SQL systems in order to get data into them. <coughs> so as we started this, um, this project, we decided to, to lean on that as well. Plus we knew that approximately three or four years down the road, we're planning on doing that SQL migration from Colleague, and we didn't want to have to rewrite this process. Um, <coughs> And it was as we got into, I would say, about the 11th hour of this project, um, and we were really into the weeds of it, we discovered that we had a problem with merging usernames across all of our systems. And we ended up having to come back to Colleague, and we customized um, the subroutines that are run coming off of DRUS, or you may call that screen Druze to create a history file to contain all of the usernames that an end user has had. Um, so like if you think about it, and you've got a person that starts out as Jane Doe, when she gets married, she may become Jane Smith. So she could go from being Jane Doe to Jay Smith. But if she were to get divorced, she might want to go back to Jay Doe. And you don't want to reuse those usernames. So you need some way of being able to track those and making sure that they're not reused. But if you remove or change a username in um, the DRUS screen and it doesn't exist anymore, it is, that severity doesn't have a problem with just reassigning that. So we customized that process in those subroutines. And we blocked um, and took DRUS out of all of the security classes in Colleague. And now it's XDRUS running our X subroutine so that as it generates a new user ID, it's bashing against the history file to make sure it's not been used before. And once a user has a username, it has all those usernames, but only one of those usernames is active at any one given time. Um, now, in this here, you'll see um, this is the, the architecture that we plan on going to as we start moving into phase two. Part of that is because we were just not ed educated up front as to what we really wanted to do, and we had so many things that we forgot about. Um, so we plan on coming in in that phase and adding to it. We want more systems, so as you start looking at um, your LMS, and I think my screen just kind of moved backwards because I bumped it. Um, adding your LMS and other systems, whether that's Informer, SoftDocs, or any of those other third-party systems, how are they going to integrate in? And we didn't really think about that some of those required federated services. So you need to add those in. You can also see down in the, um, the center here where we have the LDAP history and the perpetual accounts that we've added in into that um, design architecture. And so as you start looking at these systems, we realized that we also had a problem with our alumni um, and how we were going to handle those and those perpetual accounts, which that accounts to why we're, we're changing some of our design as we go down the road. OK, lessons. Um, you know, I keep alluding that there were things that we forgot about. And really, you know, and I've kind of mentioned it before a little bit, and I can't reinforce it enough. You really need to, before you start this project, make sure that your team is ready. Um, educate them. Help them to understand what identity management means in the way of workload, um, security, um, and just all kinds of things. Because that's really going to help them have a little bit of buy-in to your project. Um, we ran into some issues and probably bogged down our project quite a bit because we had different groups at different times start digging their heels in because they didn't want to move forward because they didn't know. And even though we were kind of told to trust, you know, Campus EAI knows, you know, trust them, just follow their lead, they weren't able to do that. And so make sure that you do that training. And upper management, you know, Hours were pushing, oh, you got to get started, you got to get started. But you really have to help them understand why that training is needed up first. So don't skip the step 
I think we ended up probably spending twice as long on our project because um, we let others convince us that we were going to rely on campus EAI to guide us and to train us as we went in this project. And it just didn't work. So I strongly suggest making sure that you do training up front. Um, politics, I think every project has politics, and we've um, had some of those issues that came out of just the very fact that we didn't train the teams up front. Um, but one of the things you want to stop and think about as you're looking at is your current workloads. You know, can you handle this project? We sunk a full FTE into this project, and that really means that that individual cannot in any way, shape, or form work on anything else. I mean, that's a full, they were doing it full time, probably for um, six to eight months. So everything else that that person used to work on couldn't be done, or they were trying to get it done, but it was forcing you know extra hours, and so it was very stressful. And so really look at those workloads up front, and you want to engage all department stockholders or stakeholders up front. They need training too. Uh, we found that they did not understand what identity management could do, or really understand its importance. As a result, um, you know, they didn't put much thought into classifying groups, and they tried to just kind of leave it up to IT to determine things like um, when a person changes from being a prospect to a student, what's, what's that time frame, you know, how does that impact and they get additional resources, different screens within the portal, and, um, you know, how long should they have access to things, and, you know, when does it begin? Uh, and you really have to make sure that they understand that so that you design those up front. Otherwise, you're going to revisit those later. Um, communication. Um, you know, for us, this is a huge problem. And I don't know if it's really because of the 11 locations and the distance that's between those locations, but communication is always a struggle. So regardless, communicate often. Communicate clearly. Um, use as many methods as possible. What we did was we sent emails to every email we had on file, whether that was a person's Yahoo account, their Hotmail account, their CMC provided emails. We created posters to be post, you know, put up in visible spots, like at their front desk registration. Um, we put posters in the bathroom stalls. We created wallet-sized cards and brochures that could be handed out at the campuses, letting our students and all of the employees know what was happening. Um, and still, at the end of the day, we had people, I mean, I, I kid you not, we had people telling us, oh, why didn't you tell us? How did you do this to us without telling us? And it's like, honestly? But you've got to communicate. Just communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, and I, I'm not sure, in, you know, in any project if um, there's too much communication. So make sure that you do all that you can there. And I've mentioned, you know, upper management support. You really need to have their sponsorship. You need them at the table helping to drive the project and helping to keep people engaged. Um, and, you know, use them to provide authority for your project. Um, and I know, I know, I keep saying it, um, mention and over and over, educate yourself and educate early. Um, and I only say that because this was our number one uh, stumbling block for this entire project. Um, so really make sure that you do that up front. Um, do not think that just because you're outsourcing this project that Campus EAI can do it. They cannot know your systems as well as you do. Um, they need your input as much as you need theirs. So you have to think of this as a coordinated project. Um, and until you wrap your head around that, I, I think you're going to constantly run into roadblocks. And this is a team project and you're one team. Um, when it comes to the design of your architecture, make sure you understand all the design options. You know, there are trade-offs. Um, there's no perfect system, but it's going to be up to you to pick that best system that fits your environment. Um, so when you take a look at all the systems that you have currently, you need to understand how they need to integrate. So you're going to do that inventory before you start designing your system. You know, can they do LNAP? Do they need federated services? 
Um, we stumbled on this because we missed some of our systems that required federated services, and now that's why we're coming back to that phase two and redesigning our systems to include federated services. So think about that up front and save yourself some time. Um, so now that you're getting that inventory of your systems and getting those all in, you really have to narrow that down to the systems that you're going to work in in phase one. Um, I think because as we look back in hindsight, doing just the three systems that we did was almost overwhelming. And if we were to have tried to do all of our systems, I, I think we'd still be trying to get phase one up and going. So really narrow down into what phases that you want to do the individual systems. And testing, test, test, test. This is going to feel like Groundhog's Day. You're going to test not once, not twice. I mean, I think we re-entered the testing phase maybe 10 different times before we actually got it to the point where we felt we could go live. Um, and you want to bring in your entire IT staff to do training. Um, we found our biggest holes in the projects when everyone was sitting around the same table talking about processes, how they were reacting, what did they look like. And the group that was the most valuable, honestly, was our service desk. Um, this is the group of people, you know, they're on the phones every day, they're receiving calls from your students and your employees, and they know, I mean, they're getting those questions. They know exactly what those stumbling blocks are to those individuals. They know the wording that needs to be used to communicate that message to them. You know, they get it. And they have, they're sitting in that unique place. You know, they're between the technical staff and they're between the, the end users. And they're, they're able to talk both languages so that everybody understands. And that's a valuable resource to you. And so really rely on them. We gave them all communications for them to edit and write. And, and, and believe me, they rewrote everything and said, oh my god, don't use that term. Oh, don't use that term. You're going to lose them. It's too technical. And they rewrote them so that it was in the language that the end user understood. So don't forget about your service desk. They're very valuable. Um, when you get down to um, thinking about your life cycle, there, there's a ton of things to think about. Um, you have to start thinking about how long are you going to keep accounts in LDAP and AD. You know, there's always trade-offs between that security and the account longevity. And <clears throat> trust me, your AD admins, they're going to have some words about this. Um, and they're the ones responsible for ensuring security across all your systems, and they know their jobs depend on it. And this is where um, we locked heels, and this is what really installed the project. Because when we started talking about adding all of these additional accounts into AD, and they were going to go from managing 500 to 1,000 accounts all of a sudden to 100,000, and that we were talking about people needing to be in there forever. They were like, oh my god, how are you going to control this? And you know, it's not that it can't be done, but it changes the thought process and it changes how they're doing those securities. And so when you sit down at the table, you really have to find that happy ground between what you're trying to accomplish and getting the network engineers comfortable. Um, are you going to have perpetual accounts such as for your alumni. And so if you're going to do that, um, how are your systems going to, going to handle it? How long are they going to have access? And to what systems should those perpetual accounts have access to? Um, so are they going to sit in AD or where are they going to sit? Um, so, and then also as you're getting ready to look at those, I mean, this is when we're coming back to that in phase two, you know, we forgot to think about alumni. I don't know how you forget about alumni, but we did. And so we start, and we really didn't think, you know, our alumni were using those accounts that often, but apparently they are. So they have that perception is that they want to keep that identity and that association with the institution. But more importantly, your foundation department, they want their alumni using those accounts so that they have access to them. You know, those are their funding sources you know, for their scholarships and whatever. So they want to be able to send emails and communicate with them. 
Um, another thing is, um, will your directory service allow multiple account life cycles? So if you have one directory service, most likely it's not. So are you, are you going to need a multiple directory model? And how will you handle trust? Are you going to have trust? So think about those. And when you get to um, thinking about synchronizing your directories, how are you going to do that? Is that going to be Forefront Identity Manager? Um, what tools are you going to use to manage those accounts? Like I said, we went from 500 accounts to managing 100,000. So if you're doing it manually, you know, 500 maybe you can do, but 100,000 is just not going to happen. So does the account generation process need to be real time or near time? Early in the design process, we were mandated to use that ODS, the operational data store from Blackboard Analytics, and that refreshes every 24 hours. Um, so now we're back to the drawing board reevaluating that because we've realized as we've looked at systems that we want accounts generated faster, um, especially during the heavy periods of registration. Um, if somebody comes in and fills an application, and for us a student can walk in um, super close to the start of classes, um, fill out an application, and they want to register the same day. So if you've got that 24-hour lag, it's not going to happen. So how do you make that happen sooner? Um, and during the account uh, generation process, um, you know, what do you do to change that design after you've already got it in place? So think about it up front. Um, and then the other thing that we really ran into is looking at the um, account names across all the systems. I alluded to earlier that we had different systems, some of them managed by other people other than IT, and they have those different usernames across all those systems. Well, with identity management, you must synchronize to a single identity. So you've got to start thinking about how you're going to do that. And when you're looking at just the systems that you're doing in phase one, you've got to think beyond that. What are all the systems? Um, because it's got to be the same across all of them when you get to the end. Um, and that's why we went back, as I talked about earlier, that history file. And that's why we had to do that, because we had so many disparate systems with tons of unique IDs. Um, and one of the things that happened, and I'm, I'm a perfect example because I was one of those with multiple user IDs. So WebAdvisor was coming in and creating accounts using first initial last name. Well, I go by my middle name, so I had this um, ID or username in WebAdvisor of H. Clark instead of K. Clark. But way back when, 17 years ago, before WebAdvisor, my account was generated in AD as K. Clark because I go by Carlene. Well, I had two things, but WebAdvisor also had a student because I was H. Clark, they were K. Clark. And what happened, and it was just by chance that we discovered this very early, when we changed my account, and I was one of the first ones to be changed, and we had a couple of others that we were changing and we were testing, we found out when you change the account in Gmail, when I went from H. Clark to K. Clark, and then somebody else got assigned H. Clark, when they logged in, they could see my old email. So they were hijacking that existing account, and you don't want that to happen. So once a username is owned by somebody, they always must own that username. So we end up having to come back. We had about 1,500, and I kid you not, really 1,500 accounts that we had to manually synchronize and clean up and make sure that that hijacking process did not happen. Um, and we chose to do that intentionally instead of just resetting all of our accounts and starting over. Um, I think we had happier end users in the end, but this was a hugely daunting process for us, and especially since those phone calls, because we had to call each and every one of those. If you really think about your IT technical staff, many of them are your introverts, and making those phone calls and having those direct conversations with people were a little bit on the stressful side. So kind of think about that and, and really looking at those systems. Um, that was extremely difficult and it bogged down and slowed down our process because it took literally um, almost a month 
to reach all those people and make all those phone calls. Um, so, and, and it was proposed to us to kind of reset all of those accounts, um, but I think it, when you start looking at the number of accounts that you have, that many people and dealing with them and trying to communicate to them to make sure that they know they all have new usernames is too much. Um, we, we just weren't really able to really think about going into that. Um, so um, this is where we're thinking about with phase two and all, and all the things that we need to do. We really do need to go back um, because of all the things that we missed and think about redesigning the architecture um, to separate the security boundaries. We really, really want to get to that real-time account generation and deactivation. Um, and we have lots of systems, you know, just because we started out with just the three that we still need to integrate. Um, and we want to revisit um, our password change portal. And I, I didn't mention that earlier, but as a part of the process, we created, um, coming off of some, and stuff, a password management tool so that all of our students, faculty, and admins could go in and register to use this and manage their own accounts. So whether they forget their password or not, they can go in and, and figure out what it is. It's got um, four security questions that are in there, and each of those four security questions have to be unique. Um, but we really want to make that a little more user friendly because um, it was in the 11th hour that we decided that we really needed that password management tool. So we very quickly designed that and got that out there. And it works great, but we would still like to um, revisit it. Um, we want to come back and look at some of the rules that we use to assign the accounts to Active Directory, do some of that fine tuning on. Um, like when a student becomes a prospect to when a student goes to be in a student, um, actually I call them all students, but they're prospects, then to students, to alumni. When does that actually occur? And make sure that those lines are drawn more clearly. Um, and for us, you know, we have a struggle with determining, you know, employees and how soon do faculty get access to Canvas and, you know, at what point do you pull them out. And so we just want to fine tune that and make sure that they're absolutely correct. Um, and the other thing that we did, um, because we were leaning so heavily on Campus EAI and we didn't have the in-house um, expertise to manage this project or to manage them, we hired um, a part-time um, up to a 20 hours a week of an admin through campus EAI. And so we want to start learning how to do that and get that expertise brought into house so that we can manage this ourselves. And of course, we need to set up um, federated services. And so at this point, um, I think we'll go into questions. And I hope I didn't go through that too quickly or throw too much at you at any one time. Um, so are we ready, Vincent, then to go to questions? Uh, just taking a look at it. At this point, hey, uh, Colleen, thank you so much. So at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the lines open for our audience, and uh, we'll take uh, all the questions. Give me one second. OK, the lines are now open. Uh, over to the audience. Uh, any anybody has any questions? I know uh, we got folks uh, dialing from uh, you know from everywhere. We got let me see. Uh, Covers College, Donna, you have any questions? <clears throat> Eric, Floyd, anybody? Uh, I don't have any questions at this time. Uh, okay. No, we're, no, we're not even close to being ready for he have, for approaching it. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for the presentation. Uh, it was uh, lessons learned, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Colleen is here. You know, in case you want to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 any, it doesn't necessarily have to be a technical, you know, conversation. Uh, any anything you want to ask her, you know, she she's been a part of this uh, project. Uh, since you know time immemorial, so you know um, any anything you want to ask her, she's you know she's uh, been extremely kind to take out her time and 
and and be here uh, and and share her experiences. So, uh, uh, and was that Floyd? Yeah, that's me. Okay, cool. Uh, so, any anything you want to know? Uh, have you started uh, implementing FIM, or you you still thinking about it? At this particular point, it's just um, uh, no. We're not even like I said. We're not even close to trying to implement identity management. Uh, I, I feel our pain trying to work across the landscape with uh, you know the the various functions, and uh, we don't integrate uh, AD with our students. It's strictly only faculty and staff. Um, uh, it, it would be cool to be able to do that, but uh, we're not. Um, now we're not nowhere in the position to do it. Okay. That is uh, Carling. That is Floyd from Technical College of the Low Country. Uh, okay, thank you for your views, Floyd. Appreciate it. Uh, anybody else uh, has questions? I think Donna uh, has a question. If I'm not wrong. No. Okay, she said no. All right. <laughs> I think she doesn't have a mic, so you know she's posted something on the question panel. Anybody else? Um, Shaker. No? Okay. All right. Uh, so I think uh, we're on top of the hour uh, anyways. And, uh, you know, at this point, uh, I would like to thank Colleen. Colleen, on behalf of uh, IDM mentioned, we really appreciate the time you've taken out of your, you know, busy schedule to share your experiences with the rest of your colleagues from all over America. So, again, we appreciate your time. Um, thank you. Uh, there are a few folks who requested your contact info, so you know we uh, happily encourage that. So for about 28 institutions that have dialed into today's briefing, uh, you know we appreciate your time you've taken out. So if you if you're not sure uh, who to get in touch with, the right person uh, would be uh, me. My name is Vincent, or whoever invited you for this party. You know Tiffany, Betty, Paul, anyone. Uh, we would be sending out follow-up emails along with the presentation to all our attendees. And if you're interested, uh, we would be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with our technical team to take uh, this initiative forward and also understand your context, uh, you know, identity management context, that is. All right. Um, anything, Colleen, you want to add before we go? I think I uh, can't hear Colleen. Let me see if... All right. Um, I think uh, we probably lost uh, Colleen, uh, you know, not being able to hear her. But uh, that is it. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining in today. Uh, we, you know, we we appreciate your time. Uh, this is IDM Engine signing off. Thank you.